Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stampin' Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you here from all around the world. Today, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to be using Masking Magic strips to create a background. Now, this is a fun new way to use the Masking Magic strips to create a background, because usually I put the Masking Magic strips on there. We do a background technique, and then we peel and reveal. But this time, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I'm so so glad that you're here and I can't wait to see what you guys do with this technique. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Happy Crafternoon, everybody. <laughs> hey. Yes. How goes? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. You went, hey, and it sounded like you had something on your mind. Happy Crafternoon. Um, did you remember passing me on the way into work today? I remember... Uh, blowing by you in a blur. <laughs> you didn't, you probably thought I was somebody else and waved in your special way. <laughs> Tom rode his bike to work today. Yeah. And I, and I did drive by. No, I, I tried not to make eye contact. I didn't want you to, really? to be distracted because you were out there. Yeah. And by the way, you were wearing shorts and a t-shirt and it was only 57 degrees. Weren't you cold? Oh, that's warm. Oh, it is? Yeah. <laughs> Not I for me. Out, I was out at six yesterday morning and it was 42 degrees and I did not dress appropriately. Um, so I got back a little bit. Uh, it, it was a little bit um, frozen when I got back. <laughs> but today, 57 was fine. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was a great ride. All right. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you have a word of the day for us later? I have a phrase of the day, yes. Oh, a phrase of the day. Phrase All right. To well, we're going to be something everybody should be able to relate to, I think. <laughs> okay. We're looking forward to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We're going to get started right away with today's technique. So, now if you guys haven't seen these before, these are the Masking Magic strips right here and the Masking Magic. Uh, sheets. Now you can use either one of these for today's technique, but I'll tell you that the strips um, are just so much more convenient. You can cut down your sheets into strips. And I did that before we came out with the strips and it worked just fine. So if you prefer to do that, go ahead and do that. But if you have the strips, this is going to be a really fun technique. Now, before we get completely started, I do want to show you something new that just went into our store today because I'm very excited about these. It's nothing big, but boy, it makes life easier. ThermoWeb just completed this for me, and I'm so excited. These are our new foam products. So remember our foam squares used to come in the little box? Well, now they come on these sheets, and there's two sheets in here. So there's 352 pieces, which I believe is pretty close to how many were in the other one. But they are so convenient. They just pop right off, super easy to use. And they come in the one quarter of an inch foam square, and the half inch foam square. And then we also now have shaker strips. And I am really excited because these are very flexible and they'll bend around our shaker dies. See how skinny they are? They're only, let's see, one eighth of an inch thick. Is that right? No, that's not right. Are they? No, I think it's, it's three sixteenths of an inch thick. That's like an eighth and a half of an eighth. <laughs> An eighth plus one sixteenth of an inch, but they're super flexible and it makes it really easy for you to wrap these around things like our shaker dies. So the, I'm really excited about these products because honestly, I love the big roll. It's really great to have around, but these are so convenient, especially for traveling and throwing these in your bag when you want to go, or you just want those pre-cut squares. So they are all, um, let's see here. These are one, let's see, one, I'm trying to see the, the depth. So the quarter inch ones are 1 16th of an inch in height where you can pile two on top of each other to make them thicker, or you can have them a little bit thinner, which is really nice because 
you can have certain flowers popped up and other flowers popped up a little bit higher, but they're still not so high that they're going to make a mess of trying to mail it in an envelope. And then the strips are one eighth of an inch. And then the um, quarter inch foam squares are also one sixteenth of an inch. So these are perfect. I'm going to be using them today in my project for sure. But I wanted to share those with you while everybody was getting here. So Let's start with the Masking Magic strips. And what we're going to do, let me grab a piece of cardstock here just to work on. I'm going to put this down because I think it'll be easier to see. I am going to be working with some craft colors today. I don't know what it is about craft, but I really do think craft ink is so conducive to summer cards. And I know maybe that doesn't sound right because... Craft ink is definitely beautiful for winter cards and Christmas cards and things, but I really like it for summer cards too. So as you know, we've got three different size masking magic strips. We've got the one eighth of an inch, we've got the quarter inch strips, and then we have the half inch strips. So I'm going to be using the one eighth of an inch strips today. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole sheet and we are going to do some wood graining right on these Masking Magic strips. Now, normally when you use the strips, you actually put them on and do your inking technique first. But this time we are actually going to use the strips as the project. So on to the project. And they hold really well. I didn't think they would hold as well as they do. But I bet a, a lot of, I mean, I, I never use them as actually part of the project. I just use them to create a design and then I got rid of them. So let's start with some warm cocoa ink. And we're going to do some wood graining on this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the edge of my ink pad and I'm just going to drag this color down like this onto my strips. Now it doesn't matter if there's spots like that. Don't worry about that. It all looks good on this card. So you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. That'll be my job. <laughs> to worry about it? <laughs> no, to do it. <laughs> to do it. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take my paper towel here and I'm just going to wipe over the surface just because Masking Magic has a little bit of a sheen to it and any ink that's pooling on top, you just want to remove. Now I'm going to add a second color in here because I want it to have a little bit of an aged look to it. And I think that when you look at wood and you see a little bit of turquoise in the mix, it kind of brings to mind that I don't know, is it rotted wood, Tom? It's like a patina look, really, but I know wood isn't really patina, copper is. But it just gives you like a more weathered look to it. And I really like that. So I'm just adding some of that down here on these strips. Okay. And if you want, you can add some green in there. So maybe I'll add a little bit of light spruce. And we'll see how that looks in there. Okay. And now again, I'm going to take my um, paper towel and I'm just going to wipe away the excess. Okay. So now I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and I'm going to trim it down. This is a quarter sheet and I'm going to trim this down to about three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. I'm going to trim it down again after I'm done, but that's a good start. And then you don't have to worry about trimming it too much later. So I'm going to start peeling these masking magic strips and we're going to create a lattice background. So I'm going to start right up here at the top corner. I'm going to bring that all the way down like that. And then I'm just going to run my finger over it to give it some pressure. Now, I like to turn the cardstock so that this looks like a straight line to me. And that makes it a little bit easier to create the rest of my strips. The beauty of Masking Magic is if it's not perfect, you can reposition it. Okay. So now I have it like this, and I'm going to continue 
with these strips going down and I'm going to space them out just by eyeballing them. And you don't have to worry if they're not perfect. And I'm serious about that. I, I made a couple of these yesterday and they did not look perfect to me. So the colors that I used were warm cocoa. I'll leave them right here. Warm cocoa, turquoise sea, and light spruce. All right, this way. Now I am going to see this splotchy part right here. I'm going to move that to different parts of the design. So this time I'm going to move it up here like this. And it's pretty easy to see that they're spaced fairly well apart. If you don't like the way it looks, just go ahead and move it. It's not forever. That's what I like so much about these masking magic strips is they do stay put, but you can move them. You can't really do that with washi tape the same way. Hello, everybody. Welcome. All right. I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to move this one down just a little bit so that I can cut the end off so I'm not wasting too much. There we go. And then let me get a pair of scissors. Here they are. So I'm just going to cut this off so I can use this here. And then, see this one here? This is a little long. I'm going to cut that off so I can use it right here. Now, go all the way until there's not enough room to make another line. So if there's too much space here, it's not going to look as good as if you do that little additional part. Okay, now I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to finish up going in the opposite direction. And again, I'm moving that little brown smudge. I'm not worried about the brown smudge. I just want to move it so that it looks more consistent. So Alice wants to know, would it be easy to use scoreboard or get straight if you're not good at measuring or getting it? Sure, straight? yeah, you definitely could use your scoreboard. Kind of put it in your scoreboard on an angle and then position them as you go. You could also use your paper cutter for that if that helps you, you know, get your paper cutter on a line. And then you could see I've got this one on the half inch mark, that one on the half inch mark. That one's not quite on the half inch mark, but if I wanted to move it over, I could. So absolutely, that is a great tip. And I'm glad that you mentioned it because I think that will help a lot of people feel better. I'm not as concerned about them being absolutely perfect, but I do understand that if you do have trouble keeping them straight, um, that you might want to use that. And that is totally fine. Okay. Let's get that down. And I do, I mean, I've done a background like this on my own using washi tape. And boy, if you get one in the wrong spot, Sometimes it'll pull the paper off and these will not. You can just move things around until you feel completely comfortable with where it is. All right. Can you reuse the strips or keep the strips on the paper? Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep the strips on the paper because we are creating a beautiful wood look. And if you want it thicker, you can use the quarter inch But I think these, these eighth inch ones, I don't know, they just really feel like a good, um, a good width for this technique. They're not too overpowering. Okay, so there we have those. Now what I'm gonna do just to get these out of the way is I'm gonna take this pair of scissors and I'm just gonna trim some of it off just so that I get rid of them, that they're not like in the way or sticking to everything. We're going to refine this cut with the paper cutter when we're done, but not yet because we have the other angle to do. So I'm not cutting the paper. I'm just cutting these strips off, the edges off. Okay. So that helps a little bit. They are sticky. 
and they will stick to your scissors, but they peel right off because it's masking magic and masking magic will peel off fairly easily when you want it to. Okay. So now we're going to go and do the opposite direction. Oh, the old lost mojo. That is an, a problem, isn't it? When I lose my mojo, I will just sit and die cut pieces, die cut words. I will just stamp little images and color them with colored pencils and Copics. Just kind of do anything to feel creative. And sometimes that's the best mojo starter. So now you see I'm starting at the corner again, corner to corner. And I've got that one down. Yeah, so maybe make panels, um, you know, cut out your master layout styles and get them ready for cards. Anything that you can do to kind of prep for card making rather than putting pressure on yourself to have to make something. I think that's the worst thing. You don't always have to make something when you're being creative. Sometimes you can just practice coloring or you can just you know, do some die cuts and glue the words together and stack them and things like that. This way, you're still getting kind of, you know, wetting your creative whistle a little bit, but you're not forcing yourself to figure out what you want to make. Misty suggests a bit of fruit cocktail. Oh, fruit salad? <laughs> fruit salad. Fruit salad is always a good way. Mojito. <laughs> Yes, a mojito. All right. And you can see now I'm creating this cool background. I love how it kind of looks like a hot mess on the uh, on this sheet. But when you look at these boards in here, they really look, I don't know, they just have such a cool texture. This is also a great background technique for masculine cards. Maybe you're looking for something that doesn't have such a flowery feel to it. And this would be a great background for maybe if you have a sailboat image or a lighthouse image and you're thinking about getting started on some Father's Day cards. This just has a more masculine feel because it looks wood grained. One more. We're just going to not waste these. Let me get that last one in there. Here we go. That looks pretty good. You can see how that's coming. Now you could even stop there and then you could have just this corner, the lattice and this just a stripe pattern if you want. But let's go for it. We'll do the full lattice background because I am going to trim this down. I got these stuck to it too. Let go. I think it's the first one that you just need to take a little bit of time lining up from corner to corner, and then it becomes easier to see where they should go. Let's see. I'm trying to read the comments too. <laughs> Masking magic. Okay, so I tried this technique out a few days ago to see how it would work. And it's been holding strong for the last couple of days. So my guess is it's going to hold pretty well. It may, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I only had it done for a few days here. But I think it's going to hold pretty well. I'm not too worried about it. All right, we'll do one there. Okay, now we'll pull that up and we'll cut this off. That's a good one to use for this part here. Make sure we have enough. We just have enough. <laughs> and then we'll do one more little piece. I'll just grab this piece here and do that. Okay. So once again, I'm going to trim off the excess. I love this distressed look. Every once in a while, I get in the mood to do a distressed looking card. And I feel like this really is just so beautiful for a background. You know, when I did the old book technique, 
Um, yeah, we all remember that, <laughs> that video. Um, but I love every once in a while, I do so many clean and simple cards with lots of white space and stuff. But every once in a while, I really enjoy creating something that has a distressed look. And again, with summer cards, this really feels like something that you would see in a garden. Yeah, the Cowboys, Donna. This looks like something you would see in a garden or something that you would see near the beach that has that distressed quality about it. All right. So let me get rid of all of these pieces here. Oh, I don't really need to. How about if I do this? Smush. And then we'll get the paper cutter and we're going to trim this down. Now I'm going to trim this evenly on both sides. You just don't want to hack some of this off because you created your lattice so it is fairly centered. So when you cut it down, you want to cut it down evenly on all four sides. So in, since I started at the three and three quarters of an inch mark and I want to take it down to three and a half, I'm going to go down in eighth inch increments. So I'm going to start here at this eighth inch mark and I'm pushing up on that to make sure that it's straight even though it's not cleaned off on the top there. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna turn this and go to the three and a half inch mark. I don't even have to go all the way to the top to do that because I can just use this line on my paper cutter to make sure that it's three and a half inches. Now I'm gonna go to the four and three quarters of an inch. So again, I'm gonna go down by one eighth increments on this side and then one eighth of an inch on this side. So you're really just taking an eighth of an inch off each side and that keeps your piece centered. I have not tried die cutting it, Winnie. So I am not 100% sure if you can die cut it or if the masking magic will pull up. So I would suggest maybe just cutting it with a paper cutter. What I should say is I would suggest you try it. You might be able to die cut it with no problem at all. Um, and it is only paper, right? So we can make those, uh, we can try it, right? But um, I haven't tried it, so I don't know 100%. You could cut the backing panel out of master layouts too. But since I have my paper cutter out, I'm just going to cut one three and five eighths of an inch to four and seven eighths of an inch on that side. And then you can see that gives me the nice little shadow edge around the outside. And you can see how pretty that is. Now, if you're really super concerned about those edges coming up, what you could do is you could use a die that creates a frame that's open in the center and then put that on top and that will hold down all of the edges. So that's if you're really worried about it. I'm not worried about it because I'm looking at it right now and it looks pretty tight, but that would be a way to do it. It does kind of look like fishing net and that would be perfect again for a summer card. I just feel like this feels like summer, although you know, maybe if you had a little texture on there first or you um, texturized it a little bit with some wood graining and then did the um, the lattice on top of it, it might be really pretty for an autumn card too. So keep this technique in your arsenal and pull it out whenever you're doing either a masculine card or, you know, a spring, summer or autumn card. And I can even see it in a holiday design too, with the right stamps, having that little bit of wood grain feature in there would really make a difference. Okay, so we've got that put together. And now I didn't wanna do that, but I do, I'm glad I did it because I wanted to show you what it looks like, but I'm actually gonna cut this piece down a little bit. So I'll leave it right in here when I, no, I'll pull it out. I'll pull it out. So if you have tape on the back of something that you don't want to be sticky anymore, all you have to do is take your embossing magic pad and tap it all over it. And that'll take the sticky away. So now it's not sticky anymore. We can make it sticky again later when we need to. And I will use this piece, but at least we got to see that. Let me get this. <coughs> I feel like <laughs> I got masking a... Uh, 
what's it called? Um, embossing magic powder everywhere, but that's okay. That's all right. That's great stuff. And it really works well. I, this is my favorite um, embossing powder because it actually really comes out. I mean, you get a decent amount of it out onto your surface. And I think that that's important. Okay. So let's put this aside for a minute and we're going to make some flowers. Now, I, of course, I want to use the current bundle because I know a lot of you guys are just getting yours and I want to keep inspiring you with this bundle. So I'm going to use these two stencils from the Create Friendship bundle. And I also am going to do a little bit of die cutting. So I'm going to cut a couple of these flowers and this bud and then a few of these leaves right here. So we'll get started with die cutting. And I do like to die cut first whenever I'm using the stencils to create single images. So let me get my die cutting machine here. Oh gosh, I'm worried so much about all of you guys with those fires and all of that haze. I hope you're all doing okay. That really worries me. Now I'm gonna use some scraps here so I'm just going to line up some of these and just cut them out randomly. So a few viewers are wondering if you could just wrap the strips around instead of cutting them off. Well, you can, but it's a little bulky. And we are going to trim this up a little more because we're, this isn't going to be the whole background. We're just going to use a piece of it. So um, we're still going to have to cut it down to size. I want to use a piece for my card. I don't want the whole uh, background. Now you could try it and see how it looks. I've done that with washi tape and I found it to be a little thick, if that makes sense. A little bit thick where it's wrapped around. It's not as crisp as when you cut it. You get that nice, super smooth edge. All right, so I'm going to do one more of these side flowers, and then I'm going to do a couple more of this one right here. So we'll cut that. It does, you're right, that it does take the stickiness off of your hands too when you're trying to position, we're talking about the embossing magic powder or embossing magic pad. It takes the stickiness and the kind of the, I don't know, you know, almost like the electricity, the static off of your fingers when you're trying to position clear stamps. I don't know, Amanda, if it's the same as cornstarch. I've heard people use cornstarch, but I don't know if it's exactly the same. So I couldn't tell you 100%. I know it doesn't have talc in it, which... I don't know if that's good or bad. I ju it just is. Um, so it very well may have quite a bit of cornstarch in it. But again, I'm not 100% sure. And I think you could probably try cornstarch if that's all you have at home. <clears throat> I mean, why not give it a try? So when I do stenciling, I like to, um, on die cuts, I like to just tack them down to my piece of paper to stencil them and just move the stencil around. This way they stay kind of tight and they don't move around. Now I am gonna use one of my ink stands. And for my colors, I wanted to do a really soft look with this. I think a soft uh, blend would be pretty. So I was thinking like Dusty Rose and Peach Bellini would be really pretty with this. Now, I know there's a little bit of blue in there, so probably some of the blues and greens would look pretty too, but let's do a contrast kind of thing where we do some soft pink and peach flowers, and then we keep the um, that blue to stand out in the background. Oh, there's a shortage of cornstarch? Avra, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. All right, so you can see these are very easy to line up. And I'm going to start with the peach bellini. Now, if you're more comfortable, you can tape down the stencil just to make sure it doesn't shift, especially because we're going to use more than one color here. And I'm going to get another ink stand just so I don't have to open and close my two ink colors. 
I'm going to be using Dusty Rose, but I'm going to have it a little bit off camera here, so you might not be able to see the lid. All right, I'm going to start with my brush, and I told you guys, although I have one color, one brush for each color family, I do really love to have a peach Bellini brush because I really don't want my peach to be either too pink or too orange, and I don't really know what color family to put it in. So that is just one extra brush I have in my collection, is my peach brush. So I'm going to start with just a circular motion back and forth just to add some color in there. And then I'm going to use a tiny blending brush with some dusty rose right on the center of this design just to enhance and get some pink in there. Definitely want this to be a deeper look. Let's take a look at that. I might add a little bit more in there. I think that's going to be really pretty. Oh, that's a pretty blend, isn't it? I can zoom in a little if you want to see it. I just love the fact that you can use this stencil, which you've seen me do several times now as a full design, but then you can also die cut the separate pieces and create your own bouquets with it. I really love that about this collection. And this is the Create Friendship Bundle if, what am I doing? If you guys, um, you know, are new and you haven't seen this one in action yet. Okay. This is about my fifth card, my fifth video <laughs> using this bundle, but I just love it so much. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this one. So a little, little rotating this way and a little rotating the other way just to catch the edges. And then we're adding that um, dusty rose. And look at what the smoothing agent, how smooth that is looking already. That's one thing that I love about our inks is the smoothing agent just blends everything together. Love that. Okay, there's the second one. And we're going to do the same thing over here with this one. So you can see why it's kind of good to have them just taped down and ready to go. And you can just shift the stencil from spot to spot. Probably want to line it up right though. Okay. And we'll do the same thing on this one. One direction, the opposite direction. And then add that dusty rose in there. Mm. Let's see how that looks. Do yes. we have a date for next release yet? Well, we're hoping for the first full week of June, but again, we are waiting for some products to get here. Um, so we don't like to really announce when it will be because what will happen is somebody will hear me say first week of June and they won't hear the hoping for part and they'll go and tell everybody that it's going to be in June. We're hoping that it's the first week of June, but we do have to wait until our dyes arrive. Once we get our dyes, then we'll be able to tell, but I think it's going to be right around the first week of June. Okay, so now I'm going to do these leaves and I have three of these clusters because I actually had one left over from another project which is why you didn't see me cut this one. You know what? And I also want to do this bud. So I'm going to go back to those pink colors one more time. And just get that right in there. And then I also have the two leaves that I want to do. Let's see. Here's one. That one here. And this one. My two closer, you guys can see pretty well. Let's go back to that peach and pink combo because we want to do the same thing on this bud. Now, the nice thing about the way the stencil is designed for the bud is the stencil itself, the bud is by itself. So you can do part of the bud and then you can do the greenery. But this is why I recommend cutting it out beforehand because if you tried to do that bud and then do the greenery underneath it, 
See how that is? It looks great like that, but you can tell because of the way the stencils are that that's not going to be straight and that's not going to die cut well. So if you do this first, you die cut it first, then it's always going to be easy to line up with the stencil. So we'll do that. I'm just going to hold it down. We'll do a little bit of the peach. And then I'm going to add this dusty rose just down here near the bottom and bring it up a little bit into there. Just kind of on that one side. Okay. And then once that dries a little bit, that smoothing agent, you'll see it'll be super smooth. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the leaves. So the leaves, it's just a big cluster of leaves, but this leaf right here will work for these. And then these two leaves will work for these. So do I have it in the right direction? Yeah, there we go. So we're going to do two colors here of green. Since we used the light spruce in the background in that lattice, I'm going to use the light spruce and then add a little medium spruce around the bottoms just to give it a little depth. So we'll start with the light spruce and I'm going to, I could tape it down, but I think I'm just going to try holding it and hopefully it will work. I don't know what's on this brush, but we'll see how this goes. So light spruce first. And then I have a darker brush, a smaller brush for my darker spruce. And I'll bring that up from the bottom here just a little bit. We'll see how that looks. Ooh, I love those two colors together. I think this is just such a pretty color combination and it's not my usual, you know, I'm, I, I really stick to the jelly bean and fresh asparagus and lots of pinks and um, teals, but peach is something I don't use enough. Now I'm going to take this paper towel and I'm just going to do a quick wipe just to remove some of that dark because I don't want, I don't want the light spruce. Um, I want the light spruce to look light spruce. And I've got, if I have dark spruce resting on that stencil, I think it's going to contaminate it a little bit. So we'll give that my fingers over here. And then again with the medium spruce. And you can change the spots that you add the darker color so you make each one look a little bit unique. And that's even, you know, it kind of gives you that feeling of two step stenciling. Just wipe that away from the bottom. Um, it gives you that feel of two step stenciling. But each one is going to be different, which is kind of cool. You can't really do that if you're just adding your shading with the stencil because the stencil's telling you where the shading goes. Here, you can add that little bit of darker color wherever you want. So here I'll add it up here like that. And you can see that just changes each one. Each one looks a little unique. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this right here. And you can see how easy it is to line that up on the die cut because you can see right through it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to be a little careful not to get anything on this flower. So I'm going to stick to right down here. It's my first color. And now I'm going to go in with that medium spruce and just catch a little bit of the edge here. Maybe a little bit of the stem. There we go. And then my final two leaves are these two right here. These two. Oops, let me get into the area where you can see these two. And they'll fit very nicely right over these die cut leaves. So that's really fun about this bundle is how you can use it as a full design and you can die cut it as a full design, but you can also break it out so you can create your own little bouquets. I really like that feature. There we go. A little shady. I like that. Looks like colored pencil and Gamsol or a little bit of 
you know, well done Copic markers. Mm -hmm. So I think I told you the wrong one. I told you this one, but it's actually this one right here. So it's this one and this one. And you probably would have figured that out for yourself as soon as you laid it there and realized that it didn't line up. But I want to retract that and get it into the video so that if you're struggling, you hear me say that. There we go. And then we'll get some of that darker shading. We'll do it over here this time. There we go. Okay, so we have all of our flowers. Yes, right now we have a limited number of our trios. We just have four collections. We are going to be adding to those collections later this year. They are nice, aren't they? It's so nice to have that ability to kind of create those blends. But don't, don't think that you can't do that with colors that are in our single colors too, because you could get this same look using jelly bean green and fresh asparagus. We got a very similar look here using peach bellini and dusty rose. So don't think that you can't, you know, you can't do this. All right, so now I'm gonna use some um, charcoal brown and I'm gonna stamp the centers of these flowers. So let me get the stamp set that comes in this bundle. And I'm going to use the little dots here. You could stencil them if you want, but I feel like I'm going to get a little bit more precision. And it's going to just be a little... The stamping and the stenciling look just a little different. They have a little bit of a different crispness to them. I'm sure you've experienced that before. Stamping is very, very like crisp and real hard edges and stenciling is just a softer look. So I like to use a little piece of scrap paper. I'm gonna zoom out just a tiny bit. Okay. And I'm gonna just test the stamp to make sure that it stamps well first. And see that's nice and crisp and that looks good. This color is almost black. So if you're looking for a good brown black, Charcoal brown is the best. If, you, if you're if you doing something that's all warm colors, but you want something that's super dark, charcoal brown really is a nice substitute for black. All right, so I'm gonna turn this this way and stamp that into this big flower there. Okay, now I'm going to use the other one because this other one is more of a side view of dots. And I feel like it might fit in here a little bit better. It'll definitely fit in here a little bit better. Okay. So I think we'll go this way. And remember, they don't have to be perfect. Better than horrible. That's the motto, right? <laughs> there we go. So now we've got some dots in there in charcoal brown. Oh, yeah, we need a word of the day or phrase of the day, Tom. <laughs> While right. I get ready for the next step, you go ahead and give your your insight into all of this. <laughs> okay, a little break from uh, the intensity, and yeah. we'll be right back with that. Okay, so the word of the day, the phrase of the day, comes from the beloved, the beloved customer service person. Okay, so we've all we have great customer service persons here we at do. Gina K Designs, Gina K. Um, but um, this is even up a notch. So the, the phrase of the day is um, uh, from customer service person to customer nervous person. <laughs> okay. So this is when you're in a line of about 25 people and you see this person that's like a dot down at the end, all the way at the end of the line. And um, sometimes it's at an airport desk or, <laughs> and this is the person that is left all alone to handle um, a whole line of people with issues that need to be resolved. They had help, but you see like the person's lower leg going out the door behind them, <laughs> right? Disappearing. So they know they're alone. This may have even been you in a situation. Um, and oh um, you, you feel really sorry for them, but you're still trying to make eye contact because you need to get something done. 
And these are people that will not make eye contact with a mammal, let alone a human being for the next 25 years. <laughs> and um, so as customer nervous person, um, this, uh, that's, that, that's the phrase of the day that goes out to those people who find a way to deal with it um, when they're all alone helping people and don't lose it and they are back the next day helping out. Uh, we've had many of them, didn't we? <laughs> Over the years, Over yes. The I've years. been one myself. <laughs> Customer nervous person. <laughs> Phrase of the day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Back to the dead space. <laughs> okay. Well, now what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this down to two and three quarters of an inch. So I know this is like hard to do. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it to like three inches, about th maybe, yeah, we'll see, three inches. Because three inches looks fairly even on top and bottom. And then I think I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off of each end to get it down to two and three quarters of an inch. So... I've got it at two and seven eighths, just because I want it to be as even as possible. But you don't have to worry about this if you don't want it to be as even or you're not as worried about it. I think that looks pretty good. I don't think I cut it very even on this side, though. I think I was thinking about customer nervous people. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we're going to use this panel, and then we're going to cut a black panel to be the same width. So this is three and a half inches. We're gonna cut this black panel down to three and a half inches. Because we want it to be the same side to side. We just wanna have a small border on the top and a small border on the bottom. So if this is two and three quarter inches, we're gonna go to two and seven eighths of an inch. For that, and that, I've got the, embossing magic pad everywhere. But that should look pretty good. And I think it does. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll adhere these two panels together. And then I'm going to use a piece. I found this. I don't know if it's the right measurement, but let me check it. Um, let's see, this is, eh, I'll get a new piece. I don't like the way that cut. I want to get a piece of craft cardstock and I want to cut it to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. And then I need a black panel to work with it. We'll see if this panel that happened to be in my stash works. It's pretty close. I think I'll cut a little bit off of this one. So this should be four and seven eighths. And again, this could definitely be cut with master layouts too. If you don't want to do all this, you know, fussy kind of cutting and measuring and checking. But I think that looks good. So this is going to be my panel. And then this is going to go on top like that. My greeting is going to go down here. And my cluster of flowers is going to go over here. So let's start assembling this card and we'll make sure that all of those pieces look good together. I do have a white card base too, and that's the color card base I think will look the best with this. Now, if you want to take this card up a notch, you could always use an embossing folder on this, but keep in mind that I am going to stamp my greeting on this one. So, you know, if you're going to do some texture on it, either make sure you stamp your greeting first or you leave some space for a greeting or you make other arrangements for your greeting. So I'm going to put that right on top of my card base. I really love the lattice look. I just feel like it's so beautiful with flowers. So let's adhere these two together. <laughs> And you see now I'm taping over that tape that's already there, but that tape wasn't active anymore because I used the embossing magic pad on it. And then what's left, what came off of this panel could be used for a second card. I still have enough over here. Let me grab it and show you. 
even though it's smaller, I still have enough here to do a second card where I could have that in the center and maybe have an oval on there or a larger floral sprig. So you definitely have enough room. Now, I feel like I need to cut that little bit of white off of there. So I'm going to do that gently with my paper cutter. Just wasn't cut perfectly. Watch me ruin the whole thing. There we go. Could have ruined it, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm going to put this up a little bit higher, but before I do, I'm going to decide what I want to do for my greeting. Now I happen to have this stamp set out, the Radiant Roses, and I absolutely love the greetings for this, and I feel like this would be a very delicate greeting. So I think I'm going to do a So Grateful For You greeting down here. And by looking at where that greeting is going to be, I think I've got this positioned in a good spot. So I'm going to commit to that and tape this down right about here. Okay. Now I'm going to do a quick little layout. I do have some tape on the back of my flowers here. So I think I'm going to use the big one off to this side and then have a, let me get my, um, my pick and stick tool to get these up because they are a little sticky. And I think I'll put this up here. Maybe I'll do this. I'll have that in the center. Then I'll have this one down here because I need to get that bud in there. I think I'll do the bud over this way. And then I just, I love to do my layouts first. You can move this whole thing over more. It can be more in the center of the card. Kind of cluster it up like this. Let's see. Get another one down here. Mm. I do feel like there should be a leaf going this way. I don't know what just dropped. Oh no, a flower. A flower dropped. Okay. Where'd that flower come from? Oh, that came from a tester. <laughs> so we'll put this here. I always like to lay everything out before I commit because you just never know how you're going to want it to look. And I'm just picking this up because they are a little sticky on the back. So we'll pull that one out there. We'll put this one down here. And then we'll probably have one more of these. Maybe over here. And then these two will come out of this top flower. Over here like this. And we'll bring the bud to the front. So I kind of like that layout. And then that gives me space still to add my greeting, grateful for you. But you see, I'm not committing yet because I might want to move that flower over because grateful for you is kind of in the way a little bit. So maybe I'll move that like that. And now I have a little more room for grateful for you. So I'm just going to touch all of this because it's got a little sticky background on there, just so it stays. And then I'm gonna put my, my greeting on here first. So we're gonna work around the greeting. I love these greetings so much. So this is a very delicate greeting and I could either use that charcoal brown or I could use black. And I think I'm going to use black just because that border is black. Now, I could have used charcoal brown cardstock for my border as well. And that would have been very pretty. So that is something to consider when you've got that little bit of charcoal brown. But I'm telling you, that brown is so close to black that I don't think it's going to be drastic. But I think the black might show up a little bit better on the bottom of this card. So I'm just using an ink cube and I'm going to stamp this a couple times just lightly. 
I don't want to over stamp it and squish it and distort it because it's so pretty just the way that it is. Do one more. Now the neutrality of this card, the kind of, um, I don't know, it's just such, it's so like warm and it would make a beautiful sympathy card. I feel like you don't need crystals and gems on this one. This one is just pretty by itself. It shows off that lattice peeking out of the side as if those flowers were just growing up onto like a trellis. Now I'm gonna move this down a little bit here so I can reach in there and I'm going to start by getting all my greenery taped down. So I have a dead space question. You do? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's really interesting to me how you can um, often spend a lot of time like working up a really neat background and then not be afraid to like not show the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, for, in, in my opinion, um, the background is a background because it's meant to be in the background. And it gives a lot of interest to the card, yet these gorgeous florals are really the feature. So I, I kind of like having it a little bit more in the background. But in this case, you could see a lot of times in my cards, I will put a big oval or a big, you know, a circle over the whole thing and you don't see as much of it. I didn't do that this time. I definitely kept it um, more open so you could see more of it because I do really think it's beautiful and it should be seen. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful background, but you're not afraid to like keep it a background. No, not at all. Now this flower, I'm going to put right onto the card. I'm gonna slip that in there, make sure that it looks tucked away and looks nice. Let's bring it out just a little bit. And then this one, I'm trying to decide if I want that one to be popped up in the center or if I want this one to be popped up at the bottom. I feel like this one I think I'm going to pop up this bottom one and that might not sound artistically like great advice, but I think it's going to look good. And I like the way they overlap each other a little bit this way. So let me get one of those new foam squares. I'm excited about these. I'm going to use the bigger ones. These are the half inch ones. Love, love, love. Okay. And I'm going to pop one of those off. Look how easy that came off. I love it. So we're going to put that right on there and just peel the backing off. Oh, the backings peel off really nice too. And so I can turn this flower a little bit, whatever way I want. I think I'll put it, should I go this way with it? I think I'll go this way with it. And I'll make sure that I keep it away from the so very grateful. So there, that gives me a little bit of lift. All right, and so there is my finished card. Isn't that a neat background? I mean, so much fun. And it's just a totally different way to use those Masking Magic strips. All right, Tom, shall we give it away? Oh boy. <laughs> Let's give it away. All right. <laughs> Let's do a cheesy drum roll, please. All right. Okay, and the winner of this gorgeous card still um, the 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 glue is still wet. <laughs> Stacy Coon, Stacy Coon. Stacy, congratulations, Stacy! You are the winner of the card. If you would send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and we will get this card right out to you. Well, everybody, this was so much fun and I hope you had a great time today. I know I did and I hope you'll give this technique a try. Remember, if you don't have the masking magic strips, you can always try this with the masking magic sheets. Just cut them down after you've wood grained it to one eighth of an inch strips and see what comes of it.
Um, I'm going to try to get back this weekend with another five minute card. We'll see. My daughter's coming back. Our daughter, Rena, is coming back from the Philippines tonight. So we may be just busy spending some time with her. We haven't seen her in a few weeks. So it just depends on whether or not I can get to it. I will try my best. But Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night with another Stamp and Chat Live. And we sure hope you'll join us for that. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much. And mwah, We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.